the recording for notes for 10-4 in precalculus on hyperbolas. And um, the objectives for this one, we'll do some of them, not all, are to write equations of hyperbolas in standard form and find asymptotes of and graph hyperbolas. Uh, we won't be using the properties of hyperbolas to solve real life problems and uh, for classifying conics, uh, there's some information from their general equations in this section. Um, we'll just classify these conics as uh, parabolas, circles, hyperbolas, and ellipses uh, based on, on their general form equations. So um, we, we won't necessarily go through what it, it says here, but I will show that to you. And I think, let me see. Um, if I, oh, I have um, some of the slides labeled, we'll only really be doing a part of this lesson so that we can kind of meet the needs that we have uh, at this point in time. But I have a little banner or a little statement above some of the slides, and I won't be recording that part uh, just to kind of uh, tell you that there are some things that you could be looking at as well. So here's our introduction. Uh, the definition of a hyperbola is simpler, sim similar to that of an ellipse. Uh, for an ellipse, we look at the sum of the distances between the foci and a point uh, on the ellipse is, that is fixed. And for a hyperbola, it's the absolute value of the difference of the distances between the foci and a point on the her her parabola, hyperbola excuse me, uh, that is fixed. And uh, so here's what we're going to have, uh, our definition of a hyperbola. And you should probably just write yourself uh, some sort of note about that. And I'll maybe, I'll do some highlighting or underlining here. Uh, so our definition of a hyperbola, I a hyperbola is a set of all the points X and Y in a plane for which the absolute value of the difference of the distances from two distinct fixed points called foci is constant. And, you know, we have that animation in our, um, in our, our problem that, uh, or in, in our little section about the introduction to conics. And so there's our picture. Um, if you want to draw that picture, you can. Otherwise, we'll have another picture and, and some more specific information uh, as, as we move on. And uh, so the graph of a hyperbola has two disconnected parts called branches. And, um, <clears throat> and, uh, those are the branches. We'll kind of comment on those, not a whole lot. Uh, a line through the two foci intersects the hyperbola at two points, which are called the vertices. And the, li the line segment connecting the vertices is called the transverse axis. And um, the midpoint of the transverse axis is the center of the hyperbola. And so we'll use that information to kind of help us graph parabola or hyperbolas as, as we go through this lesson. So then this is a nice little piece of information. And I'm actually going to um, <clears throat> redraw this picture and uh, a couple of times and just kind of talk about its its parts. Uh, so, um, but right now, here is the picture of this hyperbola. And I'm maybe going <coughs> to, excuse me, make that just a little bit smaller so that I can also write on here as well. So what I want to do is um, is I'll I'll kind of draw this and go through it. It's easier for me if I if I kind of draw things as I go. So we'll have a vertex and a vertex there and there and the center is kind of right there and the foci will be right there and there. And so those are all in a uh, line, in this case horizontal. If our hyperbola goes that way, then they'll go kind of that way as well. So just keep that in mind as we as we go through things. And um, so I'm going to call this uh, 
focus one and focus two are in there. And this is going to be vertex one and vertex two. And right there will be the center as we as we look at that. And so then this is a branch and this is another branch. Didn't write that word very well. And <coughs> excuse me. Um, and so as we look at this, the distance uh, from the center to a vertex is A. Um, and so if we know the center, which is HK, uh, then the, the vertex is going to be uh, vertex 1 and vertex 2 will be um, taking that h value and adding or subtracting that a value comma k. So that'll give us our vertices as long as this is kind of along the horizontal as we look at that. And for our fo focus or each of our foci, uh, so f1 and f2 will be um, adding a different amount uh, as as we go, and that's going to be maybe I'll I'll use a little extra color here. Um, that distance is going to be from the center to the focus, and that's going to be little c. And I'm just going to go back here, and and my center c looks like a little lower case ish. So I'm going to put it as c and h k. I know that's a lot in there, but um, I want to have that as well. So then if we have our center, uh, which is that HK, then we're going to go horizontally. So our foci are going to be H plus or minus C comma K. Um, and that'll give us our, our focus on each side. And then just kind of keep in mind that that distance is also A from there to there. And this distance um, is also C from the focus kind of to there. That's also C as we as we look at that. <clears throat> and then I just like to, to draw some extra pictures rather than put everything in that one picture. So just a, another hyperbola as we look at this. And so just uh, uh, some other pieces of information. Our center is right there, uh, center. And we'll call this uh, vertex one and vertex two as we look at this. So our transverse axis, and here it's horizontal, uh, but the transverse axis is along there, transverse axis. And, um, you know, it, it's on that picture printed by the book authors as well, but it's just a little bit harder for me to kind of see that uh, as, as I go. And, um, then I'm going to draw another picture and talk a little bit more about that relationship of C and A. So here's another uh, hyperbola, and I'm keeping these all um, in the same direction, and we'll talk about that as we as we keep looking at these. But uh, for this one, then I'm going to put the center right there, the vertices are there, the foci are right there, and so I'm just going to remind you, and I'll, I'll write with yellow and then I'll erase it, um, but that we know that, and if you remember that kind of animation from uh, when we did the introduction and even a couple of slides back here, um, this distance from the focus to one of the branches and then back to the focus is kind of what we're, we're finding that difference of as we go. And so uh, likewise, and I'm not going to leave this here, but if I go from the focus to here and then from the focus or from there to the focus, uh, that's that distance that we're talking about. So when I write this on this picture, not in yellow, um, I'm going to write it, um, or I'm going to draw it along that horizontal and I'll use some different colored markers as I go. 
go from this focus uh, to the branch here. I'm going to pick it to be that. And I'm going to pick that as going from the focus uh, to the branch. And uh, I'm going to call that D2. And then I'll use another color. I'm using kind of some light colors, but that's okay. And then from this other focus to the branch, if I kind of went to right there, uh, this is, and um, this is focus two, and this is just a point we're calling it now. And so um, this is from the focus to the branch, focus to the branch, and we'll call that uh, D2. And I, I will add a little bit more in on that other one. So that was the focus to the branch uh, right there was D2, and this was focus one. So I can kind of look at that. And then notice I put it right along that transverse axis as well. So that kind of gives me just a little better illustration of, of what's happening there. And then I'm going to put on those A and C values uh, that I had up there. So remember, this distance right here to here is A, and this distance is A from there to there. And um, my C distances, I'll put those in also in red like they were. My C distance is right there and my C distance is right there. So now if we kind of combine these two pictures together, and I am going to just add one more little dynamic on here. So um, notice this, I'll draw it in yellow again. If I wanted to find this little piece, remember this is A and this is C. So if I take C minus A, it would be this little piece right here. And that's what I'm going to kind of write in there so that I so that I know that. And um, so I'm going to call that little piece um, from here to here is C minus A. And likewise, over here, it'll be the exact same thing, C minus A. So now um, I want to kind of go back. I'll go back these two slides. And remember, we were talking about the fact uh, that that absolute value of D2 minus D1 is constant. No matter where we are along here, if we take this one minus this one, we get the same thing as if we take this one minus this one or that one minus minus that one. And likewise, the one we're picking then, and let me get rid of a bunch of this yellow, uh, is uh, the one we're picking is we're going to take that distance as D2 and that distance as D1. So let's go back to our picture here. And I think I, I was afraid that I had maybe subtracted off more than I wanted to. This was C minus A right there as well. Uh, for that little distance. So now we're just going to illustrate that to ourselves and, um, and kind of write down some, some things for our reference as we move through this. So uh, that po a point xy, which in this case would be right there, uh, just, you know, it happens to be a vertex, but it will just, we're just going to call it a point, um, is the absolute value of the distance, differences, difference of distances, excuse me, of distances from the foci to uh, the branch and our branch. And we know that that is the absolute value of D2 minus D1. And um, so we're just going to kind of figure some things out just to make sure that, that we kind of know what these relationships are. And um, so just to validate that that, um, that, that length of that transverse axis, you know, what, what is that length? We, we can visually see that it's probably um, 
going to be 2A, but that's okay. So um, on this light blue one up here, um, this piece of, of this, this distance right here, is um, these three things added together, A plus A plus C minus A. So I'll write it in this color, A plus A plus C minus A. And that's D2. And then D1, if we're going to put that in here, um, D1 is just this distance, which is uh, C minus A. And I'll put that in parentheses. So I'm going to slide this up just so it's a little easier for me to work with. And then I'm just going to put in the rest of that. So the absolute value of D2 minus D1 is, is found, uh, is, is using this information. And so that is the absolute value of A, 2A, so 2A, and then plus C minus A, and then distributing that minus C plus A. And then notice the A's cancel, the C's cancel, and we get the absolute value of 2A, uh, which will be 2A in this case. So just a little reminder uh, as, as we look at that. And then one more picture of a hyperbola. And, you know, these are not great pictures, but, um, but that'll help me as, as I go. And just kind of pulling things a little bit apart from each other. And um, so this is, this is going to be easier for me to see. So this is vertex one, this is vertex two, uh, this is focus, I'll call it two, and focus one is there, and this is the center, which is HK. So if we have all of that, and uh, we know that uh, this distance is A, and um, this distance is C, from there to there, is C. Then this, um, this might be an, a good way to kind of figure out what these different parts are. So um, this uh, vertex, since this is a horizontal line and we're going from HK to vertex and we're just adding A horizontally, this is H plus a comma k, and this vertex is h minus a comma k. So we're going to say to find the vertices, uh, we're going to go h plus or minus a comma k. And that's when this is in this horizontal alignment uh, as we look at that. And then I'll just use a different color because I'm, I'm getting to have a lot here. Uh, that distance was C. So if we're going from the center to focus two, uh, that's going to be H plus C comma K. And focus one is H minus C comma K. And so to find our foci, um, we'll go H plus or minus C comma K. And that's if this is aligned horizontally and that transverse axis is a horizontal. If it's vertical, then instead of adding and subtracting these things to H, we add or subtract them uh, to K as, as we look at that. And so hopefully that kind of helps you just see where all these uh, points are as as we go. Then moving on, um, this just kind of goes through that stuff we just talked about. Um, <coughs> similar results would happen if we had a vertical transverse axis and the development of the standard form of the equation similar to that of an ellipse so that we're just going to go right to this um, this information here. And I will add a few things uh, to this. So, um, oops, as you're writing that down, uh, you might want to add some of these things as well. Um, and so I'll probably just read through this handout a little bit as, as we go. So um, notice one thing you might want to say to yourself that A, B, and C are related differently for hyperbolas than they were for ellipses. So be cautious of that. So the standard equation of a hyperbola, um, form of an equation of a hyperbola with center 
HK. Um, so center is HK is um, X minus H in parentheses squared over A squared minus y minus k in parentheses squared over b squared equals 1. And you do want to note to yourself that that's when the transverse axis is horizontal. And then the second version is y minus k in parentheses squared over a squared minus x minus h in parentheses squared over b squared equals 1. And so I'll, I'll write some things in yellow, not that you're going to write them, but um, just to kind of notice. So notice if our transverse axis is horizontal, it starts with the x. If it's vertical, it starts with the y. So x, that will be horizontal, y will be vertical. Notice that a squared is always on that positive dynamic as we look at it. Um, and so kind of keep that in mind as well as you're looking at these. But then also notice that the H and the K, so uh, the H is, is in the parentheses with the X and the K is in the parentheses with the Y. So those kind of stay, uh, I'll say, intact uh, as, as you're looking at that. So uh, then the transverse axis is vertical. Please take a minute and, and write that. And then I'm just going to write some extra just little pieces of information. If that transverse axis is horizontal, our vertices will be at um, H plus or minus A comma K. And our foci will be at H plus or minus C comma K. And maybe I will um, change the coloring here for the vertical one. Um, we'll change that to maybe this green color. And we'll change to right in that green color. And so then if that's vertical, then the vertices will now um, be changing that Y dynamic. So they'll be at H comma K plus or minus A. And the foci, again, will be at H comma K plus or minus C, just so that, um, so that you're aware of that as, as you go. And um, so then this just kind of says a little bit more about that. The vertices are A units from the center, and the foci are C units from the center. Uh, so just some, some things to be aware of. Uh, there as well. Maybe I'll just stay with this. I'll use a maybe a different color here. Blue. I didn't want to put those together as a color coding kind of thing. Um, the other thing that we want to know here uh, that's very important, this time uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So, you know, kind of a more Pythagorean theorem like uh, just to kind of note that and that's different than the ellipse so make sure that you're careful of that and then for the hyperbola that is centered at the origin you know those that the equations are written below there and you can either write those or just kind of think about your h and k as being um, zeros as well. Oh, one thing I did want to, I wanted to add here, when the transverse axis is horizontal, um, our hyperbola is going to open that way. And uh, when it is, oops, when it is, um, when our transverse axis is vertical, it'll, it'll kind of open up and down more like that. Uh, so, We'll, we'll look at that. And as we move through, we're going to have something uh, called the uh, conjugate axis, and we'll learn about that in a little bit. Uh, but that's kind of the opposite axis as the transverse axis when we, when we look at these as we go through. So uh, those are our standard form equations of hyperbolas. And then we have a nice little picture here, maybe I'll, um, and this, you know, maybe you already have those pictures on the previous slide, but here the transverse axis is horizontal. 
here the transverse axis is vertical and it kind of just gives that information if you want to look at that you can otherwise i'm going to go on to to the next slide so uh, this one says to find the standard form of an equation of a hyperbola uh, with foci at negative one two and five two and vertices at 0, 2, and 4, 2. So what I'm going to tell you is the directions here just say to write the standard form of the equation, and that's what we're going to do for number 1. But then after we move forward, we'll actually come back and graph it. So I think to be helpful to myself, I'm going to just start graphing it um, as, I, as I go, just to kind of have a little bit better of a visual for this. So I'm going to get a piece of graph paper. Hang on a sec. Okay, uh, so now I have a piece of graph paper just to kind of make this a little easier for myself to look at. And I'm just going to plot those points. So I have a focus at uh, negative, oops, I just made a little smudge, a focus at negative one, two. So I'll put that point there. Um, my goodness, I keep smudging there. Five, one, two, three, four, five, two is the other focus. Uh, so there's focus. Oh, I didn't want to write with that thick marker, but I wanted my dots. And then our vertices are 0, 2, and uh, 4, 2. And I will label those, but I'm going to use a little thinner marker. So uh, this is focus 1, vertex 1, focus 2, vertex 2. So um, just to kind of have an idea of what my pieces are as, as I look at this. So um, now the first thing I'm going to do is find my center. And remember, the center is how, uh, the midpoint of either the foci. Oh, gosh, I'm just noticing I wrote that wrong. Uh, foc oh, sorry. Focus 2 is actually out there, vertex 2 is right there. And um, so that looks better. And just a reminder that um, the center is the midpoint of the vertices or the midpoint of the foci. Uh, doesn't really matter which one of those two you use. And so I'm going to use uh, the, the midpoint of uh, uh, I'll say midpoint of, it could be the foci or the vertices. And I'm going to use the foci. So the center is going to be um, for the foci, negative 1 plus 5 over 2, and 2 plus 2 over 2. And so our center is going to be uh, 4, 2, which is 2. 4, 2, which is 2. And just a reminder, that's H and K. Uh, so there's my center. Uh, and if I want to put that on there, I, I sure could. Oops. Let me, maybe I'll make that, I'll color code it a little bit here. And that'll be my center. One more. And um, I might as well just plot that there. 2, 2, oops, is it going to go right there? And that's my center, uh, which is HK, which is 2, 2. Maybe that's too much to write there. I'll just call it the center. And um, then we want to remind ourselves uh, that um, A and C are these two distances. So A is the distance uh, from the center to the vertex. And, you know, center to the vertex, it's going to be that distance right there. Um, which I can visually see is 2, um, but I can use my values as well. Um, so taking this 4 minus that 2 is 2. So I'll maybe write that it's 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. And um, then my C, oops, my C 
is going to be um, from the center to the focus. So C is the distance center to focus. And um, that is, um, I, can, I can visually see that, um, but from the focus uh, center, which is uh, this two again, and I'll use that focus, so five minus two, so that distance is three. So now I have uh, A and C, and so um, if I if I want to, I can uh, find B now as well, because I know A squared or B C squared equals A squared plus B squared, and um, so I'll write that. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared, and so C is the square root of two squared squared plus three squared, nine and four. Oh my gosh, I didn't have, uh, I'm sorry, my bad, wow. Uh, C is three, three equals two squared plus B squared, um, three squared. So nine minus four is B squared. So B is the square root of five. So there we, we go. Now we have kind of everything set up um, to find the, uh, the graph of this, or excuse me, find the standard form equation. And um, so I'm just going to, again, remind myself uh, that the transverse axis is horizontal. And so my hyperbola is going to open like that. Uh, so my standard form of the equation is x minus h in parentheses squared over a squared minus uh, y minus k in parentheses squared over b squared equals 1. And now I'll just put in uh, my values of the things that I, I need here. And I I um, I'll maybe color code them. So uh, parentheses x minus something squared over something squared minus y minus something squared over something squared equals one. So let's see if I can color code this. So h is two, k is two, um, a is two, wow, lots of twos, and uh, oops, B, I was gonna do C's color. Um, B is the square root of five. I'll maybe put that in parentheses. So then when I clean this up a little bit, I will get my final version here. And that will be uh, X minus two in parentheses squared over four minus y minus 2 in parentheses squared over 5, when I square that, equals 1. And so there's our standard form equation of this hyperbola. Now, we're going to leave this graphing part um, right here, and we're going to come back to it in just a moment, and we're going to graph this hyperbola um, at after we, we kind of learn a little bit more about some of this. So um, now we're going to talk about the asymptotes of a hyperbola. And that's what we're going to need then to, to be able to graph this one that we have here. And um, so each hyperbola has two asymptotes that intersect at the center of the hyperbola. So it has um, two asymptotes. Hyperbola has two asymptotes. They intersect at the center of the hyperbola. Uh, the asymptotes pass through the vertices of, and uh, the vertices of a rectangle with dimensions 2a and 2b with center at hk. So that's the way we're going to do this on the, the previous problem. Uh, we will come up with, have some equations for these asymptotes as well, but we're just going to use this kind of box method. And I think on our, our inter introduction 
introduction to conics, uh, we, we kind of saw that in that little animation thing or those problems. So the line segment of 2B uh, joining H comma K plus or minus uh, B. So um, this horizontal distance right here is going to be A and A, and that's just going to go to these vertices so we know where that's going to be. But to find these two points uh, above and below, that's a little bit different. Um, so that is, and that's going to have a name, it's going to be called uh, the conjugate axis. And, and so as we as we look at that right now, oh, there it is. Uh, that's going to be the conjugate axis, and that's going to be, maybe I'll use a different uh, color for that conjugate axis. Let me see something. I'll use a, one of these greens. Okay, um, so the conjugate axis is going to be from here to here, and um, this distance right here is going to be the distance of the length of B. So um, to find these points that we need, those are going to be at H comma K plus or minus B. And um, that's when, when it's aligned with a horizontal um, transverse axis as we look at that. And so we're just going to use this method right now and we're going to go back and kind of look at this problem and, and just kind of see if we can graph that hyperbola with that much information. And then we'll have some other uh, information as we go. So we've got um, all of these things and we knew B was the square root of 5. And um, so this B was the square root of 5. I'll maybe go back to that purple color. And um, so those points that I need are at H comma uh, K plus or minus B. So um, that will be at H, which is 2 and 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. Since really no one's asking us what they are and we just need them to graph this uh, problem, we're going to um, we're going to take and um, figure out kind of where that is as, as we go. And I thought I had that written down. Of course I can't find a calculator right this second. Uh, but I thought I had written that uh, somewhere on here as I as I went. No, I'm not really seeing it. I'm going to pause this and find a calculator. Hang on a sec. Okay, so when we get um, the square root of 5 is about 2.2. .2. So when we um, do this problem, then we're going to get uh, 2 comma and then 2 plus the square root of 5 is going to be about 4.2. And um, then our other point is going to be at 2 comma 2 minus the square root of 5, uh, which will be negative 0.2. And so even going to the nearest tenth is going to be hard for me. So um, 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4.2, so we'll kind of say that's a point right there, and 2 comma negative 0.2 will be a point uh, that's right there. And what I want is to draw my box uh, in using kind of those values, and I think I'll, I'll draw this um, using maybe that, and I want a pretty thin marker here. And so when I draw this, I'm going to just kind of go through there. I, I, it's a little hard for me without a ruler to exactly kind of go uh, with this box <laughs> as, as is. And um, then I already have my vertices, but I'll just kind of draw those in there. And this one, it's a little hard for maybe you to see as we look at that. So um, I'll, I'll kind of clean my box up. Really, I just want to see the corners of my box as, as I look at that. A little hard for me to grab those. Um, we'll, 
this one was a little low I felt like there we go and um, so now I know where the corners are of those boxes so then I'm going to take um, and put my asymptotes right through the corners of those boxes and then I'll I'll kind of clean that up at, or make those a little longer as I as I go I like to kind of so a dash line because these are our asymptotes and so we have to kind of draw those in and there we go um, now we have our asymptotes in there and then to draw in sketch our hyperbola we know the transverse axis was horizontal so it's going to open to the left and the right and um, we'll we'll write that in from the vertex Oh, just kidding. That is not what I expected uh, when I did that. From the vertex, this will go like that. I kind of have to draw them not super well, but I usually draw them from the vertex. I have an error here, don't I? Because that does not look like it's the box is centered there. One, two, this box I can make that correction but it's going to be a little harder for you so hopefully when you plotted that you plotted that a little more carefully than I did so it really should have been up there and I can kind of make this a little bit better here as well my apologies if you no need to redo that if if you made the same mistake I did my apologies for that but um, I one thing I will say is we can notice that those are not uh, symmetric and so you know that's how I could identify that I had an error there and let me get rid of that and that a, looks a little better to me. And now I'll, I'll kind of redraw that. So from the vertex, it goes like that. From this vertex, it kind of goes to that asymptote as we, as we see, whoops. And um, there is the graph of that. And that's kind of using that box method. Um, I'm, I'm maybe just going to give a little um, hint about how to graph that or a little description um, to graph uh, using the box method, box method. <clears throat> and there we make that box um, with dimensions. Two A by two B, um, centered at H K, and then we—that's uh, kind of step one. And then we draw the asymptotes through the corners. And um, then we draw the hyperbola. And um, let me just kind of see. I think I have everything on here that I that I wanted. And um, so we'll actually come back to this problem one more time uh, after we learn how to um, to to make these equations of this line uh, as as we go through that as well. And um, so that is using kind of this box method and finding that conjugate axis. Now we're going to move on and here are the equations for the asymptotes. A lot of, um, of information on these equations, but if you want to remember those, you certainly may as well. So the equations of the asymptotes of a hyperbola are y equals k plus or minus b over a uh, times in parentheses x minus h, and that's when the transverse axis is horizontal, and then y equals k plus or minus a over b 
uh, times in parentheses x minus h, and that's when the transverse axis is vertical. And um, so just kind of keep that in mind uh, as as you go through this. And we we will just kind of go back to that first problem again. And let's find those equations of the asymptotes and just see if ours were were kind of close as we as we looked at that. And so I'm just going to take a little picture of this and oh, our transverse axis <coughs> was horizontal, so this is the version that we're going to use. Maybe make it a little bit smaller, and I'll cut that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to clone this page so it's not just so much on the same page. And there we go. And um, now we'll, we'll kind of use our A and B information as, as we look at this. So um, for this one, we'll, um, oops, let me, let me paste that on there too. There we go. Um, we're going to find uh, the asymptotes by the formula. And um, so there's a reminder of our formula. And um, H and K were 2, 2. So C was 2, 2. And that's H and K. And then we have everything else we need uh, kind of down here. I can, can kind of see it. Well, I guess I have the formula as well. So uh, y equals k2 plus or minus b over a, which is the square root of 5 over 2, times x minus uh, h in parentheses, which is 2. So that gives us two different formulas as we look at that. So one is y equals 2 plus the square root of 5 over 2 times in parentheses x minus 2, and y equals 2 minus the square root of 5 over 2 times x minus 2. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'll let you, if you want to pause this and work that out, you can, um, but I'm going to give a... Um, exact value and, a, and then on decimal approximation. So y is equal to the square root of 5 over 2x plus 2 minus the square root of 5. Oops, square root of 5. And if we get decimal approximations, that's y is approximately 1.1x minus 0.2. And then over here, we're going to get y equals uh, negative the square root of 5 over 2x plus 2 plus the square root of 5. And <clears throat> if we get the approximations of that, that's negative approximately, uh, y is approximately negative 1.1x plus uh, 4.2. And, you know, if you remember, I did make a little mistake uh, when I was writing that in, but um, we did get these these kind of points there's some some relationships there as we look at that and then if you if you look at your two equations um you know it's a little hard to tell on here but um this should have intercepted here at negative 0.2 and this slope is 1.1 this one should have have an intercept of 4.2 and a slope of negative uh, 1.1 as we look at that. Just, so just to kind of see that relationship. So we could have also graphed those asymptotes uh, using those equations and not drawing the box at all. So uh, that is, is problem one. Then we're going to do two more problems. For these, we're going to... Um, sketch the hyperbolas, and so our, our job is going to be also to find the standard form of the equation and then sketch uh, the hyperbola using that. And so let's just get started here. If you feel like you want to try that, by all means do, and, um, but then, I'll, and then you can check it by the work that I'll do. So this is number two, 4x squared minus y squared equals 16. 
we're going to complete the square. In this case, there's no, there's no completing square needed, but we can already tell our center is going to be at uh, 0, 0. But this 16 has to be 1, so I'm going to divide every term by 16. I'll get x squared over 4 minus y squared over 16 is equal to 1. That tells me that a squared is 4, so a is 2. Um, b squared is 16, so b is 4. Uh, also, because of the, the order in which it's written, the transverse axis, transverse axis is horizontal. So it's going to open like that, just like the last one. Uh, our center is at 0, 0. Our center is at 0, 0, and that's HK. Um, so I've, I've got lots of things that I can get here. Um, my vertices, again, since it's the horizontal transverse axis, my vertices are going to be at H plus or minus A comma K. And so that's going to be uh, 0 plus or minus 2 uh, comma 0. And so our vertices will be at uh, 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. And um, then um, I want to also find my endpoints of my conjugate axis. So the endpoints of the conjugate axis. axis. And of course, since it's horizontal now, that those will be vertical. Uh, so that's going to be h comma k plus c plus or minus c. And so that's going to be 0 comma 0 plus or minus. And now I have to find c. Um, so I'm just going to remind myself uh, that Oh, sorry, I wrote C and it's B. Wow, my apologies. Uh, B. And because I was thinking, wait, I don't need to really know C until I find the focus, but um, it's that B. I, I wasn't finding the focus now. And um, so plus or minus that four. So these are going to be zero, whoops, uh, zero, four, and zero, negative four. So that kind of helps me find those two um, conjugate axes points. And um, so let's, let's kind of get out a piece of graph paper and put on it what we have so far. Okay, so here's our piece of graph paper. And so uh, let's plot the things that we know so far on here. Uh, we've got our center at 0, 0. We've got vertices at 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. Uh, we've got the endpoints of our conjugate axes at um, 0, 4, 4. Oh, I didn't get that color there. Um, and 0, negative 4. So I've got those points right there. And um, now I'm going to make my rectangle. So I'll give myself a little directive there. Make uh, the rectangle. And then after I make the rectangle, I'm going to draw the asymptotes. Draw asymptotes. And then after I draw the asymptotes, I'll draw the hyperbola. And then I'm going to put in the foci as well. Um, after that. So I'm going to draw the hyperbola. And so now I'll just go back to my picture so that I can kind of do all of those things. And um, so I need this line drawer. Hopefully I'll, I'll do a better job this time. Uh, I'm going to use oops, a gray color and I'll use that and this. I'm going to just, well, I could have it like that. I'm going to make it pretty thin. There we go. And so this one, I can kind of see a little better. Oh, well, there we go. 
And so oops, I'll put those in there. And they didn't go super great, but they're good enough. And then I'm just going to fix those a little bit. And this one is a little bit off. And so there's my, my box. And now I'm going to put my asymptotes in there. And I'll go from the corners of the box. Kind of helps me get a good picture. Hopefully I have done a better job than the last time. And now I'll just kind of pull these out a bit. And making sure they still go up through the corners. And this one through that corner and through that corner. So there's my asymptotes, and since I already know what the vertices are, I can just sketch my hyperbola right in there right now. And um, so I know it's going to go, oh, just kidding. Um, <laughs> I know it's going to go from, oh, gosh, I can do a better job. I feel like I'm going to. Uh, it's kind of widely open here, though, as we look at that. And yes, I'm going to have to fix that asymptote color. There we go. That's that's as good as that's going to get. And let me change that back to the green. And uh, so I have all of that in there. Now, uh, the last thing I, I need to do is... Um, I'm going to, oh, I'll use a maybe different color red here. Um, now I'm going to find the foci and plot those. Find and plot the foci. And um, so first thing I have to do is the C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And I can just barely see those. So C squared is the square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared. C squared, oh, C is the square root of. Might as well just leave that there. And so C is um, 16 and 4, square root of 20. And so C is to the square root of five. And as a decimal, I think that's going to be about uh, 4.5, but we'll just kind of leave it, leave it. So when we give the foci, we want to give those exact values. Uh, so the foci are h plus c comma k and h uh, minus c comma k. So h, uh, that's going to be zero plus 2 to the square root of 5 comma 0 and 0 minus 2 to the square root of 5 comma 0. So our foci are at 2 to the square root of 5 comma 0 and negative 2 to the square root of 5 comma 0. And um, then the approximation to kind of graph those will be kind of 4.50. And, but remember, this is the answer for that negative 4.5 comma 0. And uh, so then we'll plot our foci on there. And uh, what did we say? Four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. So this one can be right there. One, two, three, four and a half. That one can be right there. So we have successfully done that problem. Uh, we have one more that we're going to do in this, and I'll, I'll leave that slide. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to show you. There's the book author's picture. Ta-da! And when you do these on the final exam, um, I will just tell you that the um, there's no graph paper there. I will provide graph paper. You are allowed to just sketch it kind of like this freehand. Uh, just do the best that you can and make sure things are well labeled uh, as we go. And again, the foci are really these actual points. Um, we just get the decimal to kind of 
be able to to kind of do that for ourselves. So uh, last one that we're going to do together here is number three. And so um, let's get get started on that. So this is three. We want to find the sketch the hyperbola and find the equations of its asymptotes and uh, find the foci. And so let me just make sure on two. I just had to sketch it. Okay, I didn't have to give the equations of the asymptotes. So this one is 4x squared minus 3y squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0. If you want to pause this and try to complete the square, awesome exercise for you because I know you have to be able to do that. So 4x squared plus 8x plus blank plus or minus 3y squared. Uh, equals, and I'll put negative 16 over there, plus blank. I'll factor out the 4x squared plus 2x plus blank minus 3y squared equals negative 16 plus, and now it's going to be 4 times that blank. Uh, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1, and so we'll get 4 times x plus 1 squared minus 3y squared equals negative 12. And, you know, it's a hyperbola. I have to get that uh, right side equal to 1. So I'm going to divide each term by negative 12. Notice what's going to happen. It's going to kind of change the Um, negative 3, I'll leave it there for now. And then this is minus a negative, so plus y squared over 4 equals 1. I'm going to rewrite this, kind of exchanging those, so I'm going to have y squared over 4 minus parentheses x plus 1 and parentheses squared over 3 equals 1. So now, um, maybe you've been wondering, are we ever going to have a transverse axis that's vertical? Ta-da! Here it is. So our transverse axis is vertical. And so that means it's going to open, oh, that's a bad picture. Uh, it's going to open up and down, uh, kind of like that. And then this is y minus k in parentheses squared over a squared. So first minus x minus h in parentheses squared over b squared equals 1. And so uh, a squared is 4, so a is 2. b squared is 3, so b is the square root of 3. And let's kind of just put our things, I, I'll maybe write them up here so I'm a little closer to this graph uh, space. Well, I'll start here. So our center is uh, hk. So that is going to be um, <clears throat> negative 1, 0. Um, this time our vertices are going to be h comma k plus or minus a. So h is negative 1, k is 0, uh, plus or minus a, which is 2, plus or minus 2. So those vertices will be at negative 1, 2 and negative 1, negative 2. And um, the next thing I'm going to do is our endpoints of the conjugate axis. Endpoints of the conjugate axis. Axes, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> maybe that is axis, sorry. Um, is now that's going to be horizontal, so h plus or minus b comma k. And so that one will be uh, h, which is 0, plus or minus b, which is the square root of 3, comma k, which is also 0. Just kidding. I think that h was 1. Yes, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong version of that um, one. 
So um, that is 1 plus 1 plus the square root of 3 comma 0 and 1 minus the square root of 3 comma 0. And just for plotting purposes, that's at about 0 0.70 and negative 2.70. And let's just get all that on our graph uh, right now. So the center is at negative 1, 0. It'll be right there. The vertices are at negative 1, 2. And negative 1, negative 2. And the endpoints of the conjugate axis are uh, at 0.7, which I'll say is right there, and negative 1, 2.7, which I'll say is kind of right there. And then we need our box. We'll put our box in there. Oh, um, well, I did put, do all this, so I can, I can do that. If I remember right, it did also ask me uh, to find the equations of the um, of the asymptotes. So um, maybe I'll just do that as well. And I started that box thing, but I might as well um, find the equation of the asymptotes. I'll maybe just do this right over here. Um, equations. Oh, sorry. And remember, because the transverse axis is vertical, um, this will be y equals 2 plus or minus 2 over b times x minus h. And so y equals k, which is 0 plus or minus a over b, so 2 over the square root of 3. times x minus h, which is negative 1. And so we get y equals um, rationalize 0 there, but rationalizing this, I'm going to go plus or minus uh, 2 to the square root of 3 over 3 times x plus 1, and um, so that's y equals 2 to the square root of 3 over 3x plus 2 to the square root of 3 over 3, and our other one is going to be y equals uh, negative 2 to the square root of 3 over 3x three plus 2 to the square root of 3 over 3. And that's going to be y is approximately uh, 1.2x plus 1.2, and y is approximately negative 1.2x plus, um, oh, when I distributed the negative, that should have been minus, minus, oops, minus uh, 1.2. And um, so, you know, I'm just as glad that I drew the boxes in there because, or my, my points for my box, because I think those are a little harder for me to follow. So even though I had to get those, I'm also going to uh, just do the, the box a little bit here as well. Uh, I think that'll just be as easy for me, if nothing else. And I'll use that definitely as a check for myself as, as I go through this, uh, just to kind of make sure things are. So, you know, 1.1 is the intercept and the slopes 1.1. And then here, 
uh, negative 1.1 is the intercept and the slope is negative 1.1. So I'm going to say, you know, woohoo, I've got it. And that is going to be close enough for me. Oops, I'm a little off on my box there. And then another big thing I want to remember is that um, when I graph this, that um, the uh, the the graph oh, the when I graph this there we go uh, that that transverse axis is vertical and it opens up and down so I go out that way and that way from there and that way and that way from there and then the last thing that I want to do is uh, put my foci on there and um, so find and graph the foci. And again, because it's a vertical uh, transverse axis, these are going to be at h comma k plus or minus c. And I think I didn't find c. Or did I? Let me just kind of look back there. Nope. So c squared is a squared plus b squared. And so C is the square root of 2 squared plus square root of 3 squared. And so C is the square root of 4 and 3, which is just 7. So our foci are at H. Uh, there we go, which is negative 1, uh, comma, K, which is 0 plus the square root of 7. And our other one is at negative 1, comma, 0 minus the square root of 7. And so those will be at negative 1 square root of 7 and negative 1 negative square root of 7. And the square root of 7 as a decimal is about uh, 2.7. So negative 1, comma, 2.7 and uh, negative 1, comma, negative 2.7. I am going to label those because I just want to make sure that you know that the actual focus is that and we just use that decimal to kind of help us plot things. So at negative 1, 1, 2.7 is going to be right there. Negative 1 and 1, 2.7 is going to be about right there. So we can call these focus 1 and focus 2. And they are at negative 1 comma square root of 7. And focus 2, we'll say, is at negative 1, negative square root of 7. And it, it doesn't really matter which one to me that you call F1 and F2, uh, as long as you kind of have them there. So that is, these are involved problems as we go through. Uh, this is an optional problem. You won't be responsible for doing it this year, uh, but I just have it there as well. Maybe I'll just get rid of that uh, so that you can kind of see that. And then the rest of these slides, you can look at these uh, and definitely, you know, there are things we should have covered, uh, but we're not going to cover at this point this year and we'll, we'll kind of manage without. And um, then the general equations, we're not doing it this way either, but it, certainly if you want to write this information down uh, and, and use it this way, you certainly can. Um, this is kind of giving the general equation as, as a kind of polynomial version of that uh, with, before you complete the squares and kind of the relationship there. I will say that... Um, you will occasionally have to classify a conic as a circle, a parabola, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. But um, you can do that by completing the square and kind of figuring out what the, the general form of the equation looks like. And um, then there's a couple of problems. And I have this, the book author solutions there as well so that you can see those. So hopefully you can write the equations of hyperbolas in standard form, find the asymptotes of and graph hyperbolas, and um, we'll classify conics but by, by kind of completing the square. And that wraps up 10-4.